Hello, in the last video, we saw that when we were doing a depth first search, sometimes we'd get uh, cases where we would kind of uh, find an inefficient path. Like for example, uh, depth first search sometimes gives us this path from A to E, when you can see that we could have actually directly gone uh, straight to E with uh, no kind of um, uh, layovers. And, um, and so I'm gonna learn uh, or kind of teach a new algorithm here, which is called breadth first search. And so broad is kind of in contrast to deep. With the depth first search, you know, I start at A, and the first thing I say is, well, can I reach, reach it through my first child, which is B? And I consider that deeply. I kind of go all the way down until I find it uh, before I kind of go more broadly and say, well, maybe one of my other children has a kind of a nearer path. And so breadth first search is kind of the opposite. Like we'll start at the parent, and then we'll consider all the children, and then we'll consider all the grandchildren, and um, and so on and so forth. And so let me give you another example of a tree um, here. So I'm just going to get rid of this for now. Um, here's another, or I guess a graph, right? We're going to have this tree. So so in this case, what we want to do if we're searching is we would start at the top level, and then we would look at B and C. And eventually we would look at these lowest ones. <coughs> and, um, and so I'm going to delete all of this code. It's actually, uh, when I switch to doing a breadth first search, it's not even recursive. And so I'm going to delete all of this. I'm going to have to basically start from scratch. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and there's this one key idea that we have to get to do breadth first search. And that is, when I check, say, B, I discover more work, right? When I, when I kind of visit B, I realize that I might eventually have to look at D and E, right? Now, even though I discover that I might eventually have to look at D and E, I don't want to do that until I look at C. And, and so what we're going to have, which is kind of the first time we've seen something like this, is we're going to have a list. Um, it's kind of a to-do list, and it will represent all the work we still have to do. And so that way, when I visit B, I can put D and E on my to-do list. I can say, yeah, I may have to check those out later, but you know, only after I get to something more important on my to-do list, like visiting C. And, and, and because this is not recursive, uh, this is actually a fine place to have my to-do list. Okay. And, um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a loop while the length of to do is greater than zero. You know, I'm going to do something. And, um, and so write the to-do list is going to be like stuff I have to check, right? Uh, these will be like nodes to check. And so as long as there are nodes to check, I have to keep, you know, doing some work. But when I'm all done, if I've kind of completed my work and I haven't returned success anywhere in here, uh, then, then I guess I'm going to return um, false, right? I, I haven't found anything. And so one other note here, kind of version one, you know, just to return true false. Eventually we're going to get to version two where we'll return a path like we did uh, with depth first search, right? But, but let's get this down right first. I think that's the, that's the key idea here. Okay, so, so what do I want to do here? Um, well, first off, let's put some work on here. Uh, this are the, these are the nodes to check. And so the node I started on myself would, would be kind of like the first piece of work. Right, so I should put myself on that list. And let, let's just say kind of, you know, start from the front of the list, right? Whatever is nearest the front of the list is kind of higher priority work. Okay, and, and so that's great. This is on the front of my list. I'm going to start with that. And, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a current node, current node here, and I'm going to take that first piece of work off the list. I'm going to say to do dot pop zero. And, and then I guess I have to do a couple things, right? One is like check it. That's, that's going to be the first step. And then the second step is going to be uh, you know, add any new work we find to end of list, right? And, and by new work, I mean other nodes to check. Okay, and, and so let's do this first part. How do I check it? 
um, kind of a lot like we did before. I can say if cur is my destination, th then I return true. Okay. Let's um. Let, let's just kind of do some simple checks and make sure that <laughs> before I write too much code, let's make sure that this simple thing works. And and so since this is the part I haven't added yet, I think that the only way that I'm gonna be returning true right now is if I'm kind of starting and ending at the same thing. So I'm going to print off graph.find. Can I get from A to A? Yes, I can. Can I get from B to B? Uh, yes, I can. Can I get from A to B? Okay, I haven't dealt with that yet. Okay. And let, let me let me do some more prints up here. Um, so so at this point, I'm just trying to print off kind of where we things stand. So. Maybe actually right here I will. I'll print off you know, the to-do list, like that. And then, then after I pop something off, then I'll print off what I want to check, right? Does that make sense? So my to-do list, I have A. Can I check A? Well, and then it's all done, right? Because I haven't added anything else to my to-do list yet. I'd, I'd like to add, well, what would I like to add? I'd like to add B and C, right? When I, when I check A, then I kind of learn about A's children, right? I should add B and C to the to-do list, right? So, so here, right, let me loop over all the children of whatever node I'm on. So I'm going to say for child in cur.children, I'm just going to add them to the to-do to -do list, right? I'm going to say to-do.append child, just like that. Okay, and so so what what happens here? Let's just look at this for a moment before we kind of go back to the code. And actually, let me do a more complicated example. I'm going to say I want to look for a path from A to G. Okay, so maybe that's a little that that'll work fine. I guess it's a little hard to see the whole thing, isn't it? There we go. So I start off, you know, with one task, which is checking A. I check it, and in the process, I discover B and C, which are going to be the next things I, I'm going to, trying to check. Those are the children. Okay, I check B, right, because B was at the beginning of my list. And in the process, I discover D and E, right? So D and E, right, so, so before, right, I had these two things. I had B and C on my to-do list. I removed B so I could do it. And then I'm like, well, I have to do D and E as well. And, and so what it's really important to notice here is that D and E get added to the end after C. Yeah, I mean, eventually I have to check grandchildren, but that's on my to-do list for later. I'm going to do all my children first, right? So, so C is kind of at the beginning of the to-do list. So then I, then I check C, and, um, and C wasn't what I was looking for. What was I looking for? I guess I was looking for G, right? So, so C was not what I was looking for. And, um, and so I'm going to add F and G, my to-do list, after D and E. So, so at this point, my to-do list is D, E, F, G. And, um, and at this point, whenever I kind of check any of these nodes, none of them have children. So I just kind of you know, start collapsing my to-do list down. It gets smaller and smaller. Check D, three left, check E, two left, check F, one left, and then check G. And then finally, G is what I was looking for. At the very end, I'm like, okay, great, I found, I found what I was hoping for. Okay, that seems good. What what would happen if we um, let's go back to example two that we had before. First, I've had example two. This is what we really want to get working, right? And so, let me let me try doing this. Try to find my way from A to E. And well, what you can see, so so right now we're just turn, returning true or false, which is not great, but you can kind of see by the print. So what's happening, right? I check A, and then I check the first child, which is B, and that and when I check B, right? I mean I learn about C, right? But that was after my other child E, so and I end up checking E first, and so we kind of have some hope that we could. 
you know, return the short path, right? Because I'm not, I'm not doing any of this. I, I don't even ever think about D, right? So that's what we're gonna do next time. And so, you know, one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna think about, well, how can I return a path like that? The one last thing I want you to think about is if I go back to example one, um, it, it turns out there's a bug here. And what will be bad? Well, if I do, if I do this, so if I, if I say, can I get to, um, I get from B to A and this, we don't have any recursion, right? So I'm not going to get a stack overflow, but guess what? This is going to be an infinite loop and we're going to have to worry about that, right? So those are the two things to think about for next time, right? How can we change from version one to version two, where we actually get a path? And then two, how can I kind of deal with cycles? For this new algorithm where we dealt with it for depth first search now we have a new issue with breadth first search